Hello and welcome to the final 10 here on Back of the Net. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. And if you're brand new to the channel, a warm welcome to Back of the Net. We're an AFC Bournemouth fan channel and tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching this, we're going to be vlogging, vlogging the day at the Hawthorns. And these vlogs are getting a reputation, aren't they, Tom? They are a little bit, yeah. People keep, they know my little routines and, and all stuff like that. But yeah, they're going down well. And I've actually, um, we've enjoyed doing them this season, haven't we? And experiencing all the away days, especially after last season with not being able to go to any. So yeah, they've been enjoyable and check some of them out if you haven't already. There's a reason to subscribe, eh? Why not? Why not get on it now? Press that red button. And also when you do, hit the bell to be notified when we do our uploads. And because we're also playing West Brom, another reason to press that big red button is the fact that myself and Tom are going to be reviewing what it's like at the Hawthorns pre-match experience, what it's like inside the ground, what's the view like, what's the food like, what's your atmosphere like and we do it in a tier list and uh, it'll be interesting to see how it ranks and their team form at the moment dictates that it may be a little bit more quieter. Yeah, maybe a little bit and I think they will we'll probably go into it but that kind of on the beach feeling, they don't look like they can really do anything now um, whereas they'd expected to have been minimum top six at the start of the season so be interesting to see what the atmosphere is like there because well I've been there before, it's been alright but we've probably more in recent years, it's been us two kind of battling near the bottom of the Premier League. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be, we'll be interested to see what it's like. But I'm um, looking forward to it, mate. Looking forward to it. So, this is called the final 10 and the reason for that. We are one game down and nine to go. We beat Bristol City 3-2 and look, there is our fixture running. And there is the man of the moment. And we cannot not talk about Lewis Cook because what a phenomenal game he had at the weekend. We're going to try to keep this preview show short and sweet where we can, if that's even possible. But here's what's coming up. So, myself and Tom will be talking about that Bristol City performance and what a performance it was. Then we'll be going into Lewis Cook, like you mentioned. Yeah, we've got to give him a bit of appreciation because what a performance that was from our midfield maestro. And then on Thursday afternoon at Dean Court, it was Parker's presser, so we find out all the team news. And we'll go into the view on the opposition. Brucey's boys, how are they doing at the moment? Can they pick up on the form that's really not been going too well since Brucey went there? We've also got a flashback of that very first game of the season with our mini vlog. It was a, it was a Desmond, it was a 2-2 at Dean Court, and we will relive that day. And then we'll get into the pubs and predictions ahead of our trip to the Hawthorns. And then myself and Tom will go through our chosen 11. And this one, actually, I think is going to be fairly difficult because we've got no idea what's going to happen there. So, Tom, Bristol City, our last two games have seen the Cherries play with the type of form that I want to see. Yep. Huddersfield was brilliant. Bristol City, like I said in the vlog, it was, it was bookended by two sloppy defensive moments but overall the performance was really good and we had our most number of shots mm. in any game this season 25 nine of those on target and Robbins I think had six shots three of them on target we dominated it really and the scoreline probably isn't a true reflection of what we witnessed yeah I think off the top of my head I was thinking about it the other day I think there's two games that stand out to me that the scoreline flattered the opposition and they were both games against Bristol City mm. I feel like we battered them in both games and they're probably one of the, the few teams that think, i tell you what, this Bournemouth side, I'm surprised they're not closer to Fulham, actually, because we performed really well against them in both games. And I don't know if that's, you know, the way Bristol City players suited us or it's just been a coincidence. But as you say, the last two, mate, let the hand break off. Been, we've played the same sort of way, but there's just been so much more intensity to it. So much more, the tempo's been so much higher. It's, everything's been on the front foot. The first, first thought has been forwards rather than sideways and back. And I just think it's been enjoyable to watch. You've seen that in the atmosphere as well because we've really got behind them. I think Scott alluded to the fact that even at 1-0 down, the stadium was good because yeah. we, we saw that, yeah, look, they, the big lads scored a header from a corner. Mm -hmm. But we were playing well here. We've got a lot of time to go and we were confident and, and the players rewarded us for that victory. And it was, it was just really nice to have an enjoyable one at home, mate. Uh, so Anki worked absolutely tirelessly. As I thought always. the midfield three worked really well together. Lewis Kirk, we're going to go on to. Jefferson Lerma, I thought was really Really good, Philip Billing, of course. Mark Travers, absolutely solid, producing wonder saves when it was needed. I thought that 
Zamora and Anthony dovetailed really well on the left-hand side. I thought Smith and Christie did well as well, yeah. with loads of overlaps happening. And it was like watching almost a promotion-winning side of 2014-15 at times. If you could pick out a weakness in, in the performance, what, what would you say it was? Because maybe centrally, defensively, we weren't completely on top? Maybe, yeah. I'd probably go um, set pieces, actually. I'd probably go, obviously, the first goal we conceded from a set piece. And then I, I feel like, I don't know the start off the top of my head, but we had loads of corners in that first half. Yeah, we were just getting corner after corner, and we didn't take advantage of that either. Mm. So probably at both ends, maybe set pieces if, if we're looking for something. But as you say, all the combinations and things work really well. You could even go into the subs, mate, because Dembele come on and got a goal as well. So it was it was a really a really good one. And maybe you could go into, oh, here comes a plane. As no, all, if you watch this before, you know a plane always goes that's, over. That's a beauty, that, that one, Tom. Uh, that one, I think, is going to Tenerife. Oh, Tenerife. Yeah. Oh, fancy that pre-season, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, and look, this is a good time to say that we're at the pair at Parley. Yeah. And what a lovely, what a beautiful, beautiful day it is. And look, we're having a drink here, but you come here for food. It's open from lunchtime, serves food throughout the day. And I, I tell you what, mm. absolutely gorgeous here today. Can't wait for the summer, mate. Oh, I can't wait to be out here in the summer, mate. But yeah, going, going back onto the, onto the game, just trying to think of little things. I guess you could say at 2-1, if our goalkeeper doesn't make that save you know, it, it's suddenly a different game. So maybe that clinicality, which feels a bit harsh when we scored six in the last two, but you know what I'm saying. As you, as you mentioned there, we've had, we had so many shots. So maybe just, just getting that third a little bit quicker and kind of wrapping the game up. But, you know, this is just all little things we're trying to, we're trying to think about because really on the whole, apart from maybe first five, last five, mm. it was a really exceptional performance. I, I enjoyed it. And if you take a look at our heat map, I mean, we were absolutely everywhere compared to Bristol City. We were all over the pitch and, you know, they're their sort of impetus in the attacking third wasn't really there but mm. you, you can see by that with the amount of touches that we had as well 833 versus their 483 we absolutely dominated mm. and it, it didn't quite sort of echo the reverse fixture but it nearly did in that we were completely you know, dominant but with that they scored a couple of goals which you know maybe puts a sour note on things but to be fair i mean we missed some sitters and we had yeah some chances Christie should have notched when he was put through I, I really loved that the attacking flair of Jefferson Lerma getting forward when he can and that lovely little lobbed ball through from Billing from the left flank and that was a really difficult technique for Lerma because he was running he was having to keep an eye on the ball that was coming over his left mm. shoulder and he to be fair, the contact was perfect. It was on the side foot and it was straight down the throat yeah. of the keeper. But there's not a lot you can do when you're trying to, yeah. one, watch where you're hitting the ball, and but two, watch the ball itself. Yeah, there was nothing else he could have done. I think if he had tried to bring it down, the defender would have just cleared it. Yeah. So it was the only thing he could do. Unfortunately, the keeper stayed, stayed strong and, like you say, hit it down his throat, really. But yeah, it was some of the attacking verve, like you say, was just was beautiful to watch at times. Um, and we should have had a few more. I really feel for Ryan Christie because I thought he was superb. But when he gets in on goal, it's like this thing in his head, isn't it? That he yeah. just because I don't know how he's missed that. Um, Is it like Dom Solanke when he joined initially? Yeah, you kind of yeah you do you do wonder. He just he just needs a few. I mean, he's got a couple. Only I think he's got three now, Christie. But really, he should be in in double figures to be honest. But. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Bristol City. Both times we played them, I thought we were really good. I was trying to look into it a little bit, and I looked at their kind of spine of their side. It's quite ageing, so I think it was uh, closer or close at the back. He's in his, in his mid-30s, and they had uh, Matty James, who's, a, who's a more of an old-school player, and Chris Martin through the middle. And I just thought maybe maybe that helped us, because I just felt like we had so much more energy than them, mm. um, and they couldn't, they couldn't keep up with us. And, um, yeah, it was uh, another really good performance, mate. And like you say, the only tiny sour bit was that we conceded two when we shouldn't have. Lewis Cook deserves a special section on the show so that's what we've done for him because I thought that was one of his best performances in an AFC Bournemouth shirt and there are times where players get injuries like you do and you don't usually return 100% to that player that you once were I think Callum Wilson maybe possibly yeah. never really has I mean maybe he's been sort of 90-95% but that from Lewis Cook was one of his best performances and if that's what we've got to come then we're in for an absolute treat I thought he, you know, he drove forward with the ball well. He he blocked when he had to. He was he was tirelessly working. And look, I know that there are various Opta stats and various websites you can go on to see various touches. I I watched the every touch sequence on AFCB.co.uk, and these were his passes alone. Right, forty-two forward passes, thirteen sideways passes, only fifteen passes backwards. So. Let's face it, so there's 55 passes. If you add the forward passes and the sideways, you're keeping momentum 
So you've got 55 passes in a forward motion versus 15. So basically 78% of his passes didn't break the momentum of the side. And he was so, so good. And, mate, I, I really worried about him at one point. Yeah. Because we were all saying, you know, is Lewis Cook the player that we think he is? Yeah, I, I, I thought the same. I, I remember us having discussions um, on here and, and off air just kind of talking about, you know, it only felt like a few months ago and kind of saying if everyone was fit, he really struggles because he's behind Lerma. He's, you know, a different type of player to your Billings. And then we brought Campwell in. We we're trying to get Rothwell, weren't we, at the mm. time as well. Um, ben Pearson had a few good games when Lerma was suspended. And, yeah, I, I really felt because of his performances, I thought he's not the player that we, we believe we got, like you say, because of the injuries. But... In this role, I think since kind of, I remember he was he was good at Blackpool, one not So kind of since then, yeah. since it kind of coincided with Lerma having a bit of a ban. But in that role, I think, I mean, you just mentioned all the all the stats there, and it was it was easy to tell on the eye test when he gets the ball, his first thought is forward. Yeah, he's trying to drive us up the pitch, and sometimes you can get defensive midfield players that are, that are good at their role, but maybe they know that their role is to be that defence, be that mm. shield, get the ball, just give it, and let's mm. go. Whereas Lewis Cook takes on more responsibility at the moment. He seems more confident to get the ball, take a few touches, drive on, let's get us up the pitch. And mm. I always remember uh, Sermon when we went to the Premier League, I criminally underrated in my opinion, because he'd get the ball sitting deep and straight away he'd think, right, let's spray it out, let's get us going. Yeah. And that's what Lewis is doing at the moment. He knows that when he gets the ball, he's got to start something. He's got to get the transition going, and he's doing it so well. And he's even making that block. People then talk about that block at two. Well, what a block that was. So he's doing that side of the game as well. And it is always a thing with Lewis. When he gets up to speed, you're always worried that there's an injury around the corner. So fingers crossed, touching wood, because, I mean, he's arguably the one of the... I mean, I wouldn't swap him for another centre midfielder in the league when he's on this form. So, yeah, it was so good to see, mate. And... He, he looked buzzing and then a goal to, to top it off as well. I mean, he, he only scores from, you know, kind of screamers. I mean, I think his other one was better, but fair play to him having a go. And, and then he had, he had another the confidence go. to try again. Yeah. And I like that. And, <laughs> and that is what it said. It's showing that he's sharp. It's showing that he's back and it's showing that he's confident. And it, all them things are great for us. And when your confidence is right, I mean, like you said, his the way he played, his shape of his body dictated mm. that he never really wanted to go back at any stage. He was yeah. always looking to go forward. And yeah. these little driving runs through gaps I really loved. Uh, quite often it'd be very easy when there are two men in front of you to play it out to your right back or yep. whatever. But he was going between them. Yeah. And he was running into the pockets of space. And what that does is completely disrupt Bristol City. And I thought that he was incredible. And if we can keep him fit, yeah. wow, what an asset for the oh. run. And look, you know, there are others that we can talk about as well. People that had cameos like Sariki Dembele. He's been quoted in the Echo as being told by Scott Parker to, you know, just enjoy this and have the freedom. And that goal that he scored was superb. I mean, that that change of pace, Brilliant. the the strength, mm. the low centre of gravity, he got to wriggle off his market. It would have probably been a foul otherwise. His hands were around his neck. Yeah. And then he managed to get to the byline. And what I just loved was that composure to feign for a shot. Just, just move forward another couple of yards and then strike it in. I mean, you, you probably had the best view in the house of that yeah. from where you were. Yeah, and the, the annoying thing is, Sam, is when he was doing that little feint, it reminded me of playing with you with your little feint. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I thought I'd tell you that. But no, um, he's, he's weirdly probably being asked to do what Morgan Rogers was being asked at the start of the season, mm. and that's to come on late in games and impact the game. And, I mean, he got a late goal at Blackpool, didn't he? And he, he come on and impacted the game. So, you know, that, you know, no disrespect to Morgan Rogers, but, but that... In, in quality, that increase in quality is, is all there to see. And I think he's raw, and I think he's someone that will take a bit of time, but he's certainly an exciting, exciting player to have. And, um, yeah, it was, was, a, was a great change at a good time, gave us energy. And, like you say, once he, once he drove at his marker, his marker had his arms around and then thought, oh, I'm in the box now, I can't do anything. And he knows they can't touch him then. So, um, yeah, really clever, really pleased for him. And, like you say, that, there was a lot of good performances. I mean, that, just going into that midfield three for a minute. Yeah. Billing gets so so much closer to Dom. It brings some. Whatever, however, Billing plays, Dom plays better if Billing's there, because he gets closer to him and he occupies centre halves at times. Well, centre halves don't know whether to go and leave Dom. And what it also does is Lewis Cook. We were saying then he's playing deeper, but when he drives on, we've got someone in Lerma mm. who naturally sees Lewis driving on and go, "I'll sit," yeah. because Lewis has gone now. Whereas when Lewis doesn't go, Lerma's got the energy to go up as well. So it's really nice. And I think uh, Jacob Townsend put on uh, Dorset Live when it. When it was at 2-1 and it was just kind of, all right, we've got to be a little bit uh, mindful here, we just almost went double pivot for a five, mm, yeah. you know, because we can do that. And that's what's really nice is that with that three, you've got that flexibility mm. during a game. Whereas maybe the other players we've got who are all quality players, you know, your Campwells, Kilkenny, Pearson, Mark Onnes even, maybe there's not as much flexibility and then three rotating. I think the three we've got at the moment can do that really well. So, yeah, it was good to see, mate. Really, really enjoyed it. And 
Like I said, there wasn't any bad performances in my opinion. It just makes you wonder what we're going to do in terms of rotating the side because we'll come to our chosen 11 later and it's a, it's a real struggle. And um, I'll prep you up, Tom, because I know that you tweeted at Tom Jordan 21 Make sure you give him a follow. Okay. And he's done a poll over what we should be doing. Should we be rotating it? How many should we be swapping out? And uh, we'll find out what Tom and I think later on in the show. So... We're going to take a look at the league table. Before we do, we're only one of two teams that haven't lost in their last five. Oh, really? Could you name the other side? I mean, I naturally went Fulham, but I don't think it is Fulham, because um, they lost to these lot, I believe, West Brom. Mm. Um, Luton? It's actually Nottingham Forest. Ah, OK, they, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. They haven't lost in, in, in their last five, and we are one of those sides. The sixth match, that was Preston, so we did lose. So, look, mm. unbeaten in our last five, and... Mm. You know, this is when you want your side to have a good run of form, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think we had the, the mini little blip at a time where no, no one capitalised on it. No one capitalised. That I, I felt that at the, at the time when we had that blip. It needed a couple of teams to really put the pressure on us and no one did. Mm. So, so we kind of, yeah, you could say got away with it. But we got everyone has a blip. We've had ours, got it out of the way. And um, yeah, we're, we're pushing on now. And like you say, that's not only do other teams have to have a massive run to, to catch us, they they have to stop us having this this form and mm. at the moment we're looking really good mate and I've seen a few a few bits about you know we got a really tough run in we prefer the run in I don't have to repeat myself on how we've done against the likes of Peterborough and Hull but how we've done against Sheffield United against Nottingham Forest you know so QPR Huddersfield you know we haven't lost any of them yet so um yeah I'm I'm happy with the with the fixtures to be honest and really really pleased with the last few games in particular just because I just think there's been a, a little change in in tempo and we've been more incisive and. That's been great to watch. And as you may have worked out from looking at that league table, just looking at it now again, the Cherries need 17 points to clinch automatic promotion. But with our goal difference at the moment, 16 points might actually be enough. This is all assuming that Forest, of course, win their remaining nine games. But this stage of the season, we're three points better off than we were when we won the league in 14-15. Mm. So there's a lot of optimism to be had. Right, though. Is anyone injured? Let's find out a team news. It's Park Presser. So, Scott Parker has addressed the media. And we're all good, mate. We're all good. We're fine. No fresh injury mm. concerns. And he said... Taking the words from the horse's mouth, the squad is similar to last time and we are where we are. Junior Stanislas has had an injection as moving forward. We'll hopefully have him out on the grass in the coming days. Kiefer Moore is the same as well. He's moving steadily and is out of the boot, so that's very pleasing. In terms of Freddie Woodman, turned out that he was just unwell for the weekend's game against Bristol City, but he's back and has been training for the past two days. Other than that, no new concerns, which is... What we want to hear, isn't it? Eh? Yeah, definitely. With this running, you just you just don't want any. If we could just keep them all fresh, I mean, it feels a little bit harsh saying that in terms of we've probably got the biggest squad in the league. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we we would we, we we should be able to handle it if we do. But obviously, it's the you know, it's the business end of the season, mate. So I want to keep everyone fresh if we can. I thought it was um, clever from Scott when the game looked in the bag to take off your likes of Jefferson Lerma and Dom Solanke. I saw the piece with Dorset Live on uh, Jefferson Lerma and how he just comes back from Columbia and just plays the next day, no problem at all. Easy. Um, loved it. And I really want Dom to be able to be the only player to start every single game. That would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, and that would be really good for him. But yeah, all good, mate. And even, like you say, even more positive is that people like you know, Stanislas and Moore are getting closer. Um, I mean, I know Woodman's back up, but he's it's just an illness, so he'll be back on the bench if needs be as well. So yeah, all good, mate. It's just the, the usual ones, isn't it, really? I just, mm. I mean, I was thinking the other day, we all kind of, have a bit of a dig at Morgan Rogers because it didn't work. I can name four signings that have arguably been worse. Yeah. Freddie Woodman. Mm. Haven't done enough. Kiefer Moore. Right. Um, who else did I forget? Ethan Laird. Yeah. <laughs> and Robbie Brady. Do you remember Robbie Brady? Uh, vaguely. <laughs> vaguely. vaguely. <laughs> Played left back for oh, a game. I mean, to be honest, if you are the rest of the league, you're looking at them sort of players and go, they've just, I mean, what are they getting a wage for? Mm. So we have got a massive squad. So yeah, we've got to counter with that. But as you say, the team's doing well at the moment, so you don't want any knocks. It will just be if there's any kind of fitness concerns, I guess, because everyone will, will react differently to games, mm. won't they? Going into a a quick and busy running. Elsewhere in the last few days in the press, Tom Crocker wrote in the Daily Echo saying that inform Lewis Cook says, I'm enjoying my football again after admitting that he found it hard to get going following his second serious knee injury. Lewis Cook said, 
It's been tough to get back up to speed and stuff, but I feel like the last few weeks I've really enjoyed my football. I think coming back, it's hard to get going. Some people can do it straight away, but I think these last few weeks I've been very happy and enjoying my football. Scott Parker's also been assessing the display, but also the performance of the fans as well. And he said, I thought it was equally as superb as it was against Huddersfield in terms of the team performance, that is. There's probably an element to say it's even better because we went a goal down early on in the game. And at that point, at this point in the season, I think everyone could probably get a little bit edgy and become a bit desperate and go against everything we're about or try and go too hard and try to get a result. But I saw a team that took one on the chin and took an eight count and got back up. And at that point, we dominated. And I thought the stadium was incredible. Certainly a 1-0. And it was, wasn't it? It was. I thought I thought we stuck with the team at 1-0 down. It was clear that, as a fan base, we are fueled by seeing the team put in a good performance. The scoreline is irrelevant. We yeah. just want to see that attacking football. And if we do, we'll get behind them more and more and more. So yeah. it, is a, it is a two-way thing, but it's a synergy that can be created by the players by just, you know... It's going for it. It's like, as you said. It's it's, it's not the it's not the result. You lose football matches. Uh, I think the the reason it got a bit I don't know, toxic is a bit too harsh a word, but was because of the, what we were seeing. Um, it wasn't it wasn't the the score line. Um, we were going to go down or, or being level in games. I always remember Preston away. We're level in the game and we're making defensive substitutions. Mm. And but in this game, they, as I mentioned, they scored a header from a corner. Yeah. But we were we were going out and we had all the ball. We were driving. We were the tempo was good. If everyone was, you know, so we're not we're not going to get against the boys when doing that. You can concede goals in football matches. It was more before that we we looked like a team that were three nil up in games and we were just oh. keeping the ball and going sideways. And a lot of people said it. I, I kind of joked, laughed it off a little bit. And I think. It has coincided when Scott had the touchline ban and he had to go up and you could see see a game very differently when you're up the top and not on the touchline. Since then... It's like, this is what the fans yeah, are saying. It's almost like he went up there and goes, well, this is a bit dull, isn't it? it I mean, you know what I mean? It's probably nothing in it, but you know what I'm saying. Well, I've always said it's the best way to watch a game when you're high mm. up. Because when a you're, lot of managers do that, don't they? Yeah, go they up do. A bit, yeah. And when you're on the touchline, all you're really seeing, how can you see the patterns of formation? You're just seeing players crisscrossing each other. Yeah. You don't haven't got any sort of depth of field. And maybe seeing it from the, up there, he's seen things a lot more clear. I mean, obviously, he watched his games back afterwards, cool. I'm absolutely certain. But... When you're there and, and perhaps when you can even hear what the fans are saying, then he's probably thinking twice. And, you know, since he's been back, wow, we've been, we've been brilliant. So, yeah, really good, really good to see that we're putting in performances to make us smile again. And an individual on the pitch, I mean, we've mentioned Lewis Cook, Solanke. Let's talk about Mark Travers as well, because, wow, hasn't he been good? And in the week, Dan Rose in the Echo wrote... From Scott Parker, and it was uh, a quote that says, it's a sign of a top keeper that in big moments he makes big saves. Saves, you think, wow, he shouldn't have saved that, and he's kept us in the game there. Parker said that over the past three or four months, Travs is coming into the realms of making big saves at big moments, and Saturday was a massive save. That's not just Saturday, that's happened over the course of it, but I'm very pleased with Travs, he's done brilliant, and he's developed brilliantly, and Rob Birch and Gaz Stewart have done an incredible job with him. And they have, because I said that... To you in person, I, I might have said this on the video, I get confused with what I say, not on camera and what I do. But their shot that he saved was carbon copy to what Dom scored. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. He, um, he's so good at, at, at making himself big and not going down too early. And, and just his reactions are unbelievable. And that probably helps with age and things as well. But yeah, whatever they're doing on the training pitch has been working wonders and probably back along since he's been at the club for a long time. Mm. I know when we... Um, we spoke with with Willow briefly off air when when he came in and done the Ukraine video of us. He was I, I remember him mentioning we were talking about football a little bit and saying that they've they've been on about Travers for years about this guy's going to be mm. something and um, yeah really really nice to see it mate and I mean the fact that we've got a striker who's got 25 goals so far and he might not win Player of the Season mm. that's how good Mark Travers it should be a formality yeah. you know and he's he's just been sensational and I've held my hands up and not not in the sense that. I thought he was. I always thought he was a decent goalkeeper. Start of the season, did, when we lost Begovic, did I think he could nail down a number one spot? Mm. I wasn't convinced, um, and I kind of thought it might take a few shaky games, and Nyland potentially yeah, might yeah. be the number one. So yeah, it has surprised me pleasantly. But um, mate, he's talk about take your opportunity, and I want to see the blooming Island goalies because now he's not the Island number one. Mm. I mean, Island are absolutely rank yeah. uh, football. So if whoever their goalkeeper is at the moment, it's keeping Mark Travers out. Must be world class. I think his name's Basuna. 
but um, and got clue. But yeah, Mark Travers is unbelievable. As another plane goes over, oh, that's a meaty one. That's a meaty one. That bad boy. Is that a, is, do you know the name of that? You normally you know I, the planes, don't you? Yeah, I think that's a cargo plane. I think it's a cargo oh, plane, yeah, so cargo, I don't, yeah, I, I don't yeah. quite know where it's going. But yeah, mate, you're right. I, mean, I feel as though I could talk about us all day, but at some point we we got to talk about the opposition. Oh, we got another game, haven't we? We got to talk about them. Yes. Oh, go on, now, go on. So, Tom, do you want to relive the last time that we played West Brom? I, mean, I can't remember what it was, mate, so yeah, I better. <laughs> yeah! Come on! Get in! Get in! Watching that, I just I just remember how loud their fans were. Now they, they were, were really really loud. Yeah, they were good. It was first game on it Friday night, first game of the season. So yeah, they were they were well up for it. But it was a I remember at the time thinking that's a decent point with yeah. down the bare bones. Live right on Sky, and, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, it was a good game. It was a good spectacle, and um, I enjoyed it. And yeah, like you say, we had I remember like thinking who's this Amura lad? Do you yeah. know what I mean at the time. So yeah, it was uh, an exciting game. But I mean the only sub we made I think was Sadie come on. Wow. I mean, yeah, you look at our subs players that day. I think we had Kyle Taylor who's now at. Yeah, where's the exit or something? Yeah. So yeah, we had, we had, we're down to the bare bones that day. So I remember coming out of that thinking that's not a bad point, but we did lead twice, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Now, do you remember in the summer, Tom, we did a managerial tier list about who we would want at some point was yeah. it in the summer? And I've got a feeling that Valerie and Ishmael was, mm. was up there. He was. And then he obviously he went to uh, West Brom and he was manager at the time. And uh, obviously he was, he was plucked from, from Barnsley after they had a, a really good season. Yeah. And West Brom had a good start with a 10-game unbeaten run, including the opening game at uh, Dean Court, of course, which was a draw. But then their form tailed off massively. He was sacked, well, he was sacked at the beginning of February after he had a defeat at Millwall towards the end of January. So they were, they were left in fifth place on 45 points. So when I say their form declined massively, not really, but... For the squad that they've got, it felt like they were comp- they, they they were maybe underachieving. So maybe you could understand 
their reasoning and letting him go. I mean, I remember when he went, thinking that's not a surprise. They're not doing well enough. But hmm. think of that, they were fifth. And I mean, now, geez. well, that's it. It's all comparison. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, maybe he's one of them sort of managers. Because I know when we went to Barnsley, and obviously they're struggling. Um, and he got him in the playoffs last season. I, I, they love him, and I, I wonder if he's that sort of manager that last season no one expected Barnsley would do anything. Mm. Worked well with kind of a. A uh, small group of players that weren't expected to do anything. He's gone into a club with big expectations and maybe struggled to manage that. And the st- I think the style of football when he was at Barnes, he was quite direct. Maybe it didn't suit West Brom at the time with the certain players they had. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, that surprised me. I didn't know that too. He said that, that they were fifth when they let him go. Um, so yeah, it does surprise me. But they did. it did feel like a team that, that with the players they had weren't doing mm. as well as we expected. So... Yeah, one of them. I'd, from the, I'm hearing that obviously they're not doing very well at the moment, but I don't think there was many that were disappointed from a West Brom fan mm. perspective when he when he got the boot. But let us know if you're a West Brom fan, what you think. Mm. So his successor in the baggies hot seat was Newcastle United manager Steve Bruce. His first game in charge was an away defeat to Sheffield United, who won 2-0. His first game at the Hawthorns finished 0-0 against Blackburn Rovers, which maybe at the time was a respectable point. Steve Bruce, in the home games at the Hawthorns so far, has seen his team win one game, and that was against leaders Fulham. But since his first home game, Bruce's side, they've also drawn with Huddersfield Town, lost against Swansea City. His, his away record has been one win and one draw, plus three defeats. Going into this game against Bournemouth, though, after 39 games, they're 12th in the table. Oh. With 54 points. They shouldn't be 12 for that squad. That's, that's mad. Uh, yeah, really, really poor. Um, it hasn't worked. I, I thought it was a weird appointment at the time, to be honest. But, um, yeah, it hasn't, hasn't worked for him. And I don't know whether he'll be there next season. It will be remains to be seen. Um, I think I looked before, and I think they're, over the course of the season, I think they're, they're slightly better at home than they are away. Mm. But there's not an awful lot in it. And, yeah, it just, just hasn't quite worked for him, mate. I don't... But Championship all over and out, I think they've won two in 12. Mm. But one of them was against Fulham, like so. You just you just never know, and they have still got good players, good experienced players. So it's always going to be a, a potentially a tricky game away at where the Hawthorns. Everyone would think that, but for some reason it's not working. I think any West Brom fan, if you could push a button and stop the season, they would do it now. Um, I think they're they've had enough, and I think players are just playing for for contracts and and to be in the the plans for next season. But am I convinced that Steve Bruce will be the gaffer at the start of next season? Probably not. They had a four-game unbeaten run, but that came to an end in their recent 1-0 defeat at uh, Rivals, but not so much Rivals. I think Villa, they, they like to say that Villa are their main, main rivals. But anyway, at St Andrews, they lost 1-0. One and of the worst games I've seen, by the way. I yeah, that. the quality oh. wasn't great, was it? What not? I, th- I think even Steve Bruce said it. Or someone, uh, it might be their gaffer, it might be Boya, but someone said that was such a poor game. Uh, it was, I was trying to watch it, kind of thinking ahead of this mm. game, and thinking, oh, this would be an interesting game, like you say, a bit of a derby there, but... God, it was dull. So dull. And then I remembered Steve Bruce as manager and it didn't surprise me. But it's Bournemouth. We're still looking for our first win against Steve Bruce as a manager. So. Oh, no, I've just been giving him... I didn't know that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't yeah. have played him much. I don't think we have. I don't think we have played. I think we missed him quite a lot. So, um, oh, yeah, that's, that's nice. Though. Let's take that off. Let's take that off, please. So, last time we went to West Brom, can you remember what happened? I'm sure I can. But I'm just trying to make sure in my head that that was the last time. Did we lose 1-0? Yes, we did lose yes. 1-0. Yes, so it's, I know it because if my dad's watching, he'll know. I missed one away game that season. What, that was it? And it was that because my dad decided to get married on that day. Oh, really? Very selfish of him. But I remember doing a speech a and then seeing Hagazi 1-0 and thinking, yeah. oh, thank God I'm up there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, I, I thought that was the last one because I wasn't there. I think it was when Defoe had just come back. We had Begovic. It was yeah. that season, wasn't it? The last time I went there, we actually won uh, 2-1 Charlie Daniels' penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Smith scored as well. That's it. Didn't, it. didn't uh, someone get sent off? Yeah, as well? it all kicked off for a challenge was, on Adam Smith. It was was it McManaman? Was that his Muck, name? Muck someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they kicked off. But I I feel like I might be wrong. I feel like they had two centers off because I feel like Rondon got sent off. Well, right late, there, but, late. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Um, but yeah, it might be wrong. But yeah, I like I say I remember that away game because it was the only one that season I could go to. Um, cheers, Dad. But um, he's still happy married, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, we that was a disappointing one. It was first game, wasn't it? And it was a pretty big Egyptian from a set piece mm. but um, yeah I, I'm not sure you're probably going to tell me the record now but I'm not sure how we've done that we've won one that game that you just alluded oh, to that's the one we won. and we've drawn two lost five so stats aren't particularly on our side but there is a particular stat that I'm going to bring to you later that 
<laughs> that indicates that we might be all right. Oh, good. Um, but before we go on, we need to uh, check out the views from Connor from West Brom Fan TV to see what he thinks about West Brom season so far and to talk about his prediction for the game. Hello, everyone. Connor from West Brom Fan TV here. Massive thank you for letting me on the channel to discuss West Brom versus Bournemouth. Now, West Brom season this season has been absolutely terrible. Uh, probably the worst season I've witnessed as a West Brom fan, um, in my time anyway. You know, a lot of people would have tipped us at the start of the season, including myself, to be at least fighting for the playoffs, fighting for promotion. But instead, it's been the complete opposite. We started off really well under Valerian Ishmael, where we got... We went 10 games without losing and it looked like things were looking up back then. It looked absolutely brilliant. And then we played Peterborough away and then ever since then it just went downhill massively. Um, the players lost a lot of confidence and it just seems like they don't care. As for Bournemouth, they're currently sat in second and it's still obviously possible for them to win the league. Although I do think Fulham will win it. I do think Bournemouth will get automatic uh, promotion. Your squad is absolutely unbelievable. You know, you've got the likes of Lewis Cook, Billing, um, Lerma, Travers, um, Anthony, uh, Sariki Dembele, Todd Pantwell, and obviously the main man himself, um, Dominic Solanke. He is absolutely unbelievable. He scored 25 goals this season, which is a brilliant return for a striker. In terms of a score prediction for this game, I'm going to go with a 3-1 Bournemouth win. I can't see us getting anything from this game. Sorry if you can hear my dogs howling. Um, but I'm going to go with a 3-1 Bournemouth win. I'm going to say Solanke to get a double and Philip Billing to score and Carlin Grant for West Brom. Now, massive thank you for having me on the channel and good luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, Connor. Uh, from West Brom Fan TV, I felt like giving him a cuddle. Mate, I'd never thought at the start of the season you'd be going into April and a West Brom fan would be predicting Bournemouth to go down when 3-1. And mm. That says it all for a bit. Don't get me wrong, we were better last season we got in the playoffs. But it was a little bit reminiscent to us last season in yeah. terms of him saying we started well, we were unbeaten for a while like we were, yeah. but it hasn't been what we expected. And I appreciate we did end up getting in the playoffs. But yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I don't watch West Brom every week. But um, you know, they're, they're, they're still a big football club for the championship. And I think if they get the right appointment in, in terms of manager potentially get a few additions they've got a few ageing players they'll I would still predict them to be there or thereabouts next season mm. I think they've just got to write the season off and as yeah. I said earlier they, they probably just wanted to stop mate but um, yeah you never know I always, I'm always wary of teams like this because on one hand people say on the beach on the other hand I think they've got no fear yeah, they yeah, can just, just kind of go for it so it'd be, I'm, I'm looking forward to it it'll be interesting I think well, players for West Brom who missed the recent Birmingham City game through injuries, including uh, include Daryl Dyke, Marty Phillips, and all for, and also Kenneth Zahore as well, and they are a doubt for Wednesday. I mean, they've got a few players hmm. to look out for, mate. Have you got any names that you want to sort of pluck out? Well, um, Colin mentioned there, didn't he, that he thought Carlin Grant would get their goal, and he's probably the main threat. Do like a little fantasy league um, on in the championship, and I, I start with him as my main striker, yeah, thinking yeah. it'll be him and Mitrovic will be the boys, but. Um, yeah, he, he's still in double figures, isn't he? He's still, I think he's still kind of knocking on the door of 15. Yeah. Could potentially get 20. It'd probably be a bit of a stretch. But he's a good striker. He is a good striker. And um, he'll, he'll still be dangerous. And then they've got experience in Jake Livermore in the middle of the park, mm. who, you know, will, will kind of... And that's why I'm surprised, because I think, you know, you've got these players around him. Then you've got the experience of Jake Livermore. I think they've got Cole Bartley at the back. A lot of experience as well. But Haven't they got experience up front as well? Um, who else have they got up front? Long hair. Who, who am I forgetting? Andy Carroll. Oh, God, him. <laughs> I forgot he's there, isn't he? Oh, no, he's going to come off the bench and not... Oh, I hate playing against Andy Carroll. But, yeah, he was obviously... I forget, he was at Reading, wasn't he, and then went there. But, um, yeah, that'll be interesting if they chuck him on as well, get, get his head on a few bits. But, yeah, so they've got they've got a bit of experience there. It just, for some reason, hasn't worked. But, yeah, I think Carlin Grant is probably the main one. You mentioned that Phillips is probably going to be out, and he's normally a decent player, but he seems like he's going to be out. So, yeah, they have got good players, but for some reason not working. They've got a bloody England international, the goalkeeper. He was in the last England squad, Sam yeah. Johnson. So... Yeah, mad really, but yeah, keep an eye on Carl and Grant, I think. Doesn't seem to be much enthusiasm within their fan base at the moment. I think the, the win uh, for Birmingham City against them probably just uh, you know yeah. caps it off for them. Actually, Gary scored. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, huge, huge boost for us to Bournemouth if we can get a, a result here. I sort of, I, I thought in my head we'd, we might lose one of these two. Mm. But we've got, um, if we get a win, then it, 
I'm not saying that Sheffield United's a free pass, but it, you know what that does for us is you know build momentum, yeah. confidence, and stuff. And maybe we can go to Bramall Lane and get something. Uh, the referee in charge is uh, is Bournemouth-born Keith Stroud. Say it quietly. This will be memed up when we beat him with a last minute penalty. He's refereed us where we've never lost. We've won 11, drawn two. How is this allowed? I don't know. I saw something earlier about, I know Liverpool fans are having a bit of grief because of their game against Man City coming yeah. up. There's someone who's a Man City fan potentially. and It's mad, isn't it? But, um, yeah, you want to kind of say it, probably don't play into it, and then you say that we've never lost with him. However, Stroud in. How, so the last, he actually refed. Great ref, by the way. He, he refed QPR home and away this season. Six points. <laughs> <laughs> but... Wasn't there a bit of a melee at the end and uh, mm. at, at Loftus Road? Yeah, we didn't have a... Did we have a man sent off or was it just QPR that had a man sent off, did they? Just QPR. <laughs> oh, God. I'm trying no, to... good bloke, Shroud. I'm surprised he's not going to the World Cup. What a ref. What I a mean, ref. look... We should probably get him on for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what? Let's do pubs and predictions. Come on. <laughs> So it's called Pubs and Predictions because we're going to talk about where you can go for a drink in and around the Hawthorns, but also we'll get our predictions on screen. You can get yours on screen in the comments as well. So let us know what you think. How do you think it's going to pan out? Let us know the score and scorers in the comments below. And at this point in time, if you haven't liked the video, then now's a, a bloody good time to do so because what it does, it, it helps us out. It puts the video in front of more eyes. So when, when people are on the YouTube homepage and they're searching like West Bromwich Albion it might be up there so click the like it really does help us out so then in terms of the pubs then there we go beautiful map there the vine on Roebuck Street it's like Indian cuisine your curries and all sorts of stuff um, that's that's a really good away pub and popular go to go to you've also got the Royal Oak on Hollyhead Road that's uh, postcode B21 as well that's to the east of the ground You've got the park in by Radisson as well, if you want to drink there. And quite a way away, the Yew Tree, another Indian theme pub as well on Albion Road. But I think we're going to be going to the Vine. And, you know, it's a big enough pub. It's, it's a really good atmosphere and great food as well. I can't, I can't wait to go there. Make, make sure you're there too. Yeah, should be good, mate. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm pretty sure that's the only one I've been to when I've been there. That's the only one I can remember anyway. And I really enjoyed it. Um, and I think uh, a lot of away fans, have a, we have a little look around and people seem to enjoy that one. So, mm. yeah, so it's a good away day. It's another one that I think, oh, I wish it was on a Saturday, but yeah. I think it'll be an enjoyable one, mate. Um, so, yeah, I see a lot of chairs there. I don't know if we've sold out or not, but um, no, I think, I I think we're taking a good, a good bunch up there, so it should be a good one. When Chairman Jeff Hayward's going, we know oh. that it's going to be a good away day. So, Absolutely. fingers crossed, it'll be good. Um, right, mate, um, prediction-wise, obviously a lot of it maybe depends on the personnel that Scott Parker picks, and that's going to be coming up later on. But um, if I was to ask you now how you feel, I mean, two really good performances against mm. uh, one good team and one not so good team, but a team that got a result over what Blackburn Rovers or something, didn't yeah, yeah. City. So you know what they they're capable of getting results. Yep. Um, so you know, three two not to be sniffed at, and it and it should have been more comprehensive than that. Yeah, against West Brom, a team that. I would say probably w w would like to attack, but their confidence seems to be bereft. Mm. The atmosphere might not be there. It, it could be one where we could, you know, go for the jugular. Yeah, potentially. I, I, I probably feel like it's going to be a tight affair. I don't know whether in my head I'm just thinking West Brom away, West Brom away, that's tough, that's yeah, tough. Yeah. And whereas you actually look at it, like we've been saying... It's, they're never high scoring, are No, they? I do feel like it will be a low one. I, I am going to go 1-0. I'm going to go 1-0 to us. I think we're just going to nick it. I'm going to go for a little rogue shout. Nat Phillips header. Nat Phillips said it because if I get that, I mean, come on, that would be big. But for some reason, he's so good in the alpha, he's going to pop up this season. Yeah. And in this last night, he's going to pop up with a header, and I'm going to go for this one. So, yeah. And it'd be nice to beat, beat Brucey with a set piece, with a big man. Yeah, I love it. it. So, yeah, I'm going to go 1 0, mate. What about you? Um, I, I, I want to say, oh, like, a big part of me thinks a draw. A big part of me thinks a 1 0. But I, I'm not going to say that. I think it could be a 2 1 Um Again, I think it'll be tight. And. Uh, Dom Solanke on the road to 30 goals, which I think he will get this season. And I think, uh, I want to say Jeff Lerma, but no, probably oh. not. He doesn't score that often. He's Philip that last away game, but whatever. Philip, Philip Billing needs yeah. to get back on the score sheet as well. So that's, that's our predictions. Let us know yours.
put them in the comments below. Right, are you ready to pick your team? Go on then. Come on, here we go. 11 out, I'm, this is, I think I'm on for three or four in a row. Of 11 yeah. out of 11. This one, uh, look, Tom, Twitter, you did a poll earlier. Yeah. Tom Jordan, I'm gonna 21. Check it now. Yeah, I'll double don't, check it now. Have a look, because what, what did you say again? You said, what, what are we going to do in yeah, terms of, or what should Parker do? Yeah, because I think it's difficult, because you go two really good, two of our best performances back to back probably over this course of the season. So you think, well, just unchanged. But then with the fixtures coming up and, you know, we've got a big squad. Does he rotate? We got Sheffield at the weekend, early kickoff on Saturday. Yeah. So I kind of just asked about it. And unchanged, there's still time to vote, but unchanged is slightly winning with 38%. Click the card at the top of the screen and we'll take you directly to Tom's tweet so you can put your lucky, say. There you, lucky, lucky things. Lucky things um, yeah, that's slightly winning at 38%. Then it's Dembele for Anthony at 24%, which is probably because of his impact yeah, when he come on. Yeah, although but, Anthony would... Did and play he did really play well, well and he, you know, badly, arguably yeah. should have, could have scored, apart from a good save yeah. from their keeper. And then 21% is rotate more than one, and then people have been commenting, maybe potentially change both wingers, and maybe take Christie out as well and play low. And people have also mentioned the fact that Smithy's had injuries, so maybe Stacey, which I understand. And then the last one I put was Campwell for Billing, which has only got 17%. That one was the one that I thought might be the one, but then... Yeah, I, I, I probably... That midfield three is so crucial, yeah. but I wouldn't want to. Yeah, I probably only put that because I felt that it was interesting that... Campbell never come on and Billing played 90. That was my only, you know, sometimes you think, oh, is he thinking because Campbell's going to play the next yeah. game. But, um, yeah, it remains to be seen. I personally think if there are any changes, the only ones I could see, you know, we're going to the 11 now, potentially Stacey for Smith because of what I mentioned, mm. potentially Campbell for Billing because of what I mentioned and potentially Dembele for Anthony. Mm. Apart from that, I'd be surprised. But, um, and obviously Woodman's going to come back on the bench for Will Dennis. But, yeah, it'll be, it'll be tough for Scott Parker. I do feel for him because I think... If we just say, for argument's sake, were to lose the game, yeah. if he made changes, people would go, well, why'd you change a winning team? Yeah. If he didn't make changes, everyone would go, well, why didn't you change it yeah, and freshen it up? So he can't really win in that sense. So, but he knows better than us who's fresh and who's not. So there might be some bumps and bruises. Some people might return fitter than others. So um, I trust him to, to make the right call. But it is one that I wouldn't be surprised if there was a few, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was none. Right, let's put the pitch on screen, eh? There magic it is. Work. Look at that. Magic. Um, all right, mate. So, Travis in goal. I'll, I'll make that shout for you. Really? Yeah, I think I will. I think he's, I think right, he's done all right so far. That's on you, then. Um, you know what? I think three of the four defenders probably pick themselves. But for yeah. me, the right back could be up for contention. Just not because Smith had a bad game. I thought he had, had a brilliant game. But if he was going to rotate, maybe. But I'm not sure he will. Yeah, so I'm not sure, mate, because... To be honest, I, I understand the rotation, but I'm looking at the two games in a week and I'm thinking, get four points, it's done. I mean, I think it's done anyway. Yeah. But if you go to West Brom and Sheffield United and get four points, Ooh. I mean, I think we've done it. So because of that, I think you get Smithy for a week, you get him for a week and then you bring Stacey in for a, what would it be, Borough, won't it, um, on the Good Friday, potentially, if you need to. It's so, Borough then Cov, isn't it? Yeah, and maybe you, you mix it up there. But I think for these, I think he's going to stick with Smith, okay. especially away from home, that experience. And yeah, as you say, I think the rest stay the same. So that'd be Nat Phillips and Lloyd Kelly at centre half with Jordan Zamora at left back. OK. Um, midfield three. I mean, Lewis Cook's going to be playing. He's got to play. He's got to. No, he's been awful. Yeah, of course, of course, Lewis Cook's playing in that deeper role with Jefferson Lerma slight to the right hand side. Like, like we mentioned earlier, that can always go into a double pivot if needs be. Yeah. And the other one is up for grabs in the sense that Campwell is, I mean, if you've got Campwell available, there's always going to be a chance of him coming in. But I like the way he gets close to Dom. I don't see, he, does he ever rest Billing if he's fit? No. So I think Billing will continue in that role, mate. I really do. OK. Uh, and then the wide players, yeah. which is, um, I suppose, two of your more disposable positions, I suppose you could call it that. And, you know, with one of them having a bit of a, blind, well, I say blind, I mean, what a goal it was from, from Dembele. Um, yeah. You know, I think Christie's probably going to be an in. Yeah, I think he is. I think the fact that when he went to Scotland, he only started one game. I think if he had started both games, Maybe. I just I just saw in the in the week actually Kieran Tierney for Arsenal played two ninety minutes, two friendlies, and now he's potentially out for the season. Yeah. And Arsenal are fuming. The fact that Christie didn't start in the second one and only played one, I think he's he's all right. And mate, I love what he gives. It's a shame in front of goal, but I love what he gives, and I don't see him being dropped. I don't think he. Someone tell me, but I don't think apart from when he's been injured, I don't think he's ever been on the bench. No. He's either been not been in the squad or he started. So I, th I think Christie starts. The other one's up for grabs. When did Anthony come off? Um, oh, 
Was it, it was sort of late? Was it, it was, was it quite well, late. Like 75 or something? Yeah, I want to say, oh, you've said 75, now I want to check to see how good you were. I, but, don't, um, I don't know. I'm I just, thought he had a good game, though. Yeah. I did think he had a good game. I just... I thought he had a good game. And, you know, uh, there are moments when watching that every touch and watching the alternate angle, I yeah. think that him and Zamora, like, just look really confident. 72. And, oh, 72. Not bad for me, that. Not um, bad. But I... And I, I look at the fixture and I think, say it was at home to... Even West Brom, actually. Let's say West Brom. Say it was at home. It w- I would maybe edge for... He might, oh, he might give Anthony a start. He did recently, didn't he, at home? Yeah. I think it was Peterborough. But away from home, he always plays Anthony because Anthony can give you the, the other side of the game. Yeah, so... So I'm going to stick with Anthony. I am going to stick with Anthony. Well, you know... It wouldn't shock me, but I am going to stick with Anthony. This is looking like an unchanged team, mate. Unless what? Lowe's going up front. Are you assuming Dom Solanke up front? <laughs> you, yeah. Uh, I am going to go unchanged. Like I say, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I'd understand a couple in here or there. But I just think the two performances have been so good that I think he's going to... F- He's going to want to keep that momentum, hopefully get a lead, and then maybe take some of them off and rotate as and when. But I think this week, he'll be looking just to get through this week and they'll rotate after that. Tom, do you let, like, we're not going to do a real bet, but let's just like say there's 100 quid on the table. You've got 100 quid. Yeah. Um, will Dom Saranke reach 30 goals this season? So he's on 25, right? Yeah. We've got nine to go. Yeah. Yeah. If you were a better man, would you say you say it was? Ooh. If, yeah, if it was both the same returns for if he does and if yeah, he does, yeah. I think I would just edge for he will. I think he would just hit 30. Yeah. And just hit 30. Uh, maybe those games against like Middlesbrough and Coventry are the, um, are the ideal time to, I, I, to, to do that, maybe. I think it weirdly suits him. in Because t- people would look at the fixtures and go, oh, he's got tough games, though. But I think that suits him. Because I think if, he was, if we had fixtures against lower league teams, I think they'll just sit back and it'll be so frustrating for him and he'll struggle. But I think because he's going to play teams, as you mentioned there, Sheffield United, Barra, they're they're trying to get the they're trying to cement the playoffs to try and get the top two and Forest as well, and that will mean they'll have to be a bit expansive. Which if he gets room, so yeah, I'm, I'm I reckon he's going to win it, mate. I really do. And you forget because we haven't had too many, but he'd probably be on pens, wouldn't he? Yeah. So good point, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I think he'll just hit it, which will be remarkable for a player that people doubted would get twenty. So the fact he's in twenty five already, he's already got more than. Um, Grabbin and mm. Callum Wilson got for us in the championship, so right. remarkable player, remarkable, and um, I'd love him to get 30. How amazing would that be? And he's still not going to be the top scorer yeah. because Mitrovic is an absolute joke. <laughs> so there's our team. What do you think? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below what you think your team will be. Tom, we said we'd try to keep this short as possible, but we've just had so much to talk about. Yeah, we always do, mate. Like I say, we, to be fair, I think we done a few little dis- dissections ahead of previews when we had that bad run. Yeah. And I don't think it would be fair to then go and be playing well while we just gloss over it. Uh, yeah, I could, yeah. It's, it's having that's that fair. balance, isn't it? We were, we were critical of what we were seeing, but I'll tell you what, at, actually hats off yeah. to the last two performances because they've been so... We kept saying, we just want to enjoy what I'm seeing, I just want to enjoy it, and like, bloody hell have I enjoyed the last two. They've yeah. been so good to watch, And mate. that's one thing. It feels like the club are trying to drive that home in terms of we want... We want everyone to enjoy it, we want yeah. the players to enjoy it, we want the fans to enjoy it and just um, embrace the moment because it, it looks like it's on and if you can't enjoy the moment whilst you're in it, oh. then when can you? It, 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 it doesn't feel the same enjoying it when you're not there afterwards, you know, let's just enjoy it now. And look. Yeah. Um, There will be some bumps along the road, but we're in a good position cool. and the team's playing very well as well. Look, really looking forward to tomorrow. Re- Warwick services. Oh, I can't wait, mate. We, we have to do a service, a services tier list at some point <laughs> because all we do before an away game is talk about what services we get. <laughs> God's sake. But um, let us know in the comments below because I think Warwick is, is go yeah. War Warwick and Fleet. I mean, they're just, you can't even touch them. Because like the club used to stop at Cheryl Valley all the time, but now it's Warwick's the one that it chooses all the Warwick's time. The Warwick's Warwick's you know what? You've got me thinking now. We're going to do it. They love, they love a tier list. Maybe we'll get Chris Temple in on it as well because tier, yeah. you know, like him and Willow stop at every single service station going, so <laughs> they travel all over. So it'd be maybe good to have some professional insight. Listen, however you're watching the game tomorrow, whether you're travelling, safe trip, you may be watching it on the red button or you may be watching it on AFCB TV. Make sure you enjoy it. Subscribe to this channel because as soon as it hits full time, we're going to be outside the stadium doing fan cams and we'll post the video. As soon as we can, and on Thursday there, there may be a cheeky little vlog drop for you as well. Lovely stuff. I mean, imagine if you're not subscribed after that. Imagine. Unbelievable. It's so weird. See you later. Up the cherries, and come on, let's get three points. <laughs> don't you know? Pump it up. The reds are going up. Don't you know? <laughs> Love that from you. Yeah.